2020 Democratic primary field is getting pretty crowded. At least 16 have thrown their hats in the rings. More are expected. The latest is Wayne Messam, a 44-year-old mayor of Miramar, Florida, the 44-year-old mayor of Miramar, Florida, who formally launched his campaign on Saturday, vowing to take on the big issues, including gun violence, climate change, and student debt. Mayor Messam joins me now. Thank you very much for being here, Mayor. Good to have you here tonight. Thanks for having me, Martha. So, you know, I, I'm looking at this board of all of these contenders that are in so far and, you know, others who are still undeclared, like Joe Biden and the uh, mayor of South Bend, Indiana, who you see pictured there. You know, a lot of them, um, he may not be in this category, but a lot of them are, you know, better known than you are. They have more experience on the national stage. So why why get in? Well, you know, as a son of immigrant parents who came here to uh, America from Jamaica chasing the American dream, my father cut sugar cane for uh, a while to help support his family and to live that American dream that they set out for me, um, being a mayor of a major city in Florida, uh, starting a construction business, playing mm -hmm. football at Florida State University. Yeah. Um, I see that those dreams and opportunities are slipping away from the American people. You know, you said it the word about experience. When you look at Washington, you have to wonder if solutions are solving or they're solving the problems of Americans. You know, mayors are closest to the, to the people. Uh, we don't have the luxury of shutting down our government. You know, as a mayor of the city of Miramar, uh, we're tackling some, uh, tr some big issues. You know, uh, we have a climate, a business and climate where our companies are choosing to stay in our city opposed to going to China. Oh, uh, we've uh, passed no, I, a living wage you. in our city. Let's talk yeah, about a couple a of your of great big things. issues. In terms of student loan debt, which is an enormous problem, I think everybody recognized that. We're one, there's $1.5 trillion in debt. What's your solution for that? Well, you know, um, the student loan debt crisis is really crippling not only um, Americans from being able to purchase homes, invest in businesses, um, they're paying um, on average $400 a month. It's really right. slowing down our economy. It's the second highest consumer debt, second only to housing. And I'm proposing that um, there be student loan debt forgiveness, um, that we wipe out this burden um, so that we can give um, a boost to our economy. Uh, we can create so jobs. So everybody who has a well student loan out there it would just be forgiven and who would pay the colleges back well the 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 debt would be covered by the repeal of the uh, the trump tax cut if you look at the estimates um approximately about two trillion dollars on worth of um tax credits and, 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 and cuts to the richest of americans and corporations um, we would use that funding to um, forgive that debt so don't you think that that would i know you're a businessman don't you think that that would sort of kind of put a cog in the wheels of the economic engine that has been turning since we saw those tax those taxes lowered on corporate America well if the company I mean, they would make were different decisions dollars, right away if they knew it, that a lot of that money it, was going to be gone and there, it was all going to go to student debt relief well, right if companies were putting the monies back into Americans where they could afford um, to live, where they can afford health care, they can invest in businesses, but that's not happening. Um, they're, they're, they're laying off workers. Um, I think it'll actually be a boost to the economy. Extraordinary low unemployment it rate in this country boost. right now, which I know you it, know. It, it will be a boost to the economy. It will be actually, uh, it will make about 86 to $100 billion um, impact to the GDP, um, uh, uh, create over 1 million jobs um, over the years, and it will be an economic stimulus that will allow uh, average Americans to buy homes, buy, uh, invest in businesses. You have the accountant that has all this debt that have to pay back and student loans. They'll start their own practice, create new jobs. It's so what about going forward, for though? What about all the students going forward who have to, and I agree with you. The student loan debt is a, is a big issue. It's a problem in this country. But would we just continue to, to pay for, you know, the debt uh, going forward? No, no, what we would do is we will learn from our lessons. We'll make higher education less costly, more accessible. We'll invest in our public colleges mm -hmm. and public institutions where we would, um, would hope that um, the states and, and, the, and our, our nation would be an environment where people can actually go to college at a much reduced cost. And we will put on proposals and, and, and policies that will help spur that. Right. But at the end of the day, when Americans cannot afford higher education, which is required to get high-paying jobs, 
jobs and corporations are requiring Americans to have these jobs. Wow. They should not have to leave college I, with this high I debt. I agree with and you. I, I think everybody off agrees on that. Professional careers. I think the solution is, um, you know, obviously up for discussion as we move through this whole process, but it, it's, a, it's an important issue. Wayne Messam, thank you very much. Uh, Mayor of Miramar in Florida, good to meet you tonight. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. You bet. Before we begin this next segment, a warning to our viewers at home. This is a show with a sense of propriety, a family show. We try not to put anything on the screen that we'd be ashamed to show our own children. So with that in mind, you may see pictures as this progresses that make you uncomfortable. You might want to leave the room. It's about Joe Biden. Joe Biden was supposed to be the front runner for the 2020 presidential nomination on the Democratic side, and the polls show that he still is. But the former vice president has had a terrible weekend. He has faced backlash for controversial behavior, physical behavior around women. Former Nevada Assemblywoman Lucy Flores on Friday accused Biden of making her feel deeply uncomfortable by kissing her without being asked on the back of the head at a 2014 campaign event. She wrote a piece about it. Former Democratic congressional aide Amy Lapos, meanwhile, accused Biden of inappropriately touching her head in 2009. It's a head thing. Flores says that in her view, Biden should not run for president. So I've answered this question many times in saying that personally, I do not believe that he should run. Hair sniffers have no place in the modern Democratic Party. The rules are changing fast, but that's apparently where we are right now. In any case, it is not a great look for Joe Biden. Keep in mind, he is the man who has over the years and many times recently bemoaned the fraying of America's moral fabric. That invisible moral fabric that holds up a society, a democracy, is being shredded. There's an invisible moral fabric. There's an invisible moral fabric. There's an invisible moral fabric. This invisible moral fabric. There's an invisible moral fabric that holds up all societies. The invisible moral fabric. The moral fabric. The moral fabric of society is invisible but essential. To stop this enormous erosion of the moral fabric that's at the hands of Donald Trump and the Republicans. The moral fabric is fraying. The good news is the moral fabric softener smells amazing. So should Biden stay out of the Democratic race? Well, the other candidates quite can't, can't make up their minds on that question. Watch. I believe Lucy Flores. And... Joe Biden needs to give an answer. Should he not run as a result? That's for Joe Biden to decide. You know, I, I believe um, Lucy Flores. He's going to decide whether he's going to run or not. People raise issues and they have to address them. And that's what he will have to do with the voters if he gets into the race. Author and columnist Mark Stein joins us tonight. So, Mark, one of the many reasons I'm glad you're with us tonight is to help make up my mind on this question. I mean, on the one hand, you think he is a warm person. I know him. He is warm. On the other hand, it's a lot of hair sniffing. This is the guy who the Secret Service said used to swim naked in front of them, including female agents. There's something a little creepy here. What should we think about this? Well, you know, Tucker, there's an invisible moral fabric uh, that's fraying, and it's holding up the back of that uh, lady's dress, uh, which is why Joe Biden's got his uh, nose between her shoulder blades, trying to keep it from fraying any further. Um, you, mentioned, you mentioned those Secret Service agents, and I've heard, heard a lot of people I respect, like uh, uh, Brit. Britt Hume earlier today, and Britt was saying that he doesn't think there's anything at all sexual about that. And I think that, that can be true and yet still not be a mitigating factor. Uh, you mentioned the, the, his habit of swimming naked in front of female Secret Service agents who are there to take a bullet uh, for the vice president uh, when he uh, removes his swimming uh, shorts and tosses them over the heads, that's not really the bullet they're supposed to be taking. There is something that is actually uh, slightly presumptuous about this behavior yeah. in the way uh, that it was when Charlie Rose used to do, uh, over at PBS, used to do dress rehearsals undressed. It's a power thing. It's yeah. the presumptuousness. And the Democrats right. are completely morally indifferent on this unless it serves their ends. And what they 
want to do is take this guy out. The other candidates want to take him out the way Jeb Bush uh, was taken out by Trump two, two, uh, four years ago. But they haven't got a Trump uh, to take out Jeb Bush with a single well-placed adjectival insult, low energy Jeb. So you use what you have. And that's why all these Democrat candidates have basically decided uh, this, this is the bullet that takes out uh, uh, Joe Biden. I don't think he's going to run because I don't think he wants to be defending a lot of this stuff uh, no. between now and November next year. That's a lot. There's a lot of hair sniffing. I, I would just say my mm. one concern, obviously I'm enjoying this deeply. I think Joe Biden is fraudulent in a lot of ways and shouldn't mm. run. But you don't want to live in a society that's even colder and more atomized and more standoffish and more suspicious than the one we're already in. I mean, maybe the one good thing about Joe Biden is, you know, arm around the shoulder, which he's done to me many times. I mean, you don't want to kill that entirely, do you? Well, that's actually an interesting point, Tucker, because, uh, in fact, I was talking to someone just a couple of days ago who said he's actually a bit overly touchy-feely with men, too. Um, yeah. And you're right. But I think, the re I think realistically, in, in this age of moral panic, and me yeah. too. I mean, actually, if I were a male Democrat candidate, I'm not sure I'd actually want to stand no. on a stage no. No. Uh, with female Democrat candidates. I'd certainly want to put a lot of physical space uh, between us. That's but right. the fact is, this is an utterly cynical move. Uh, you use what you have. Uh, we're, we're now two months from the equivalent point where Trump came down that escalator at Trump Tower and disrupted the, the whole Republican process. They haven't got anyone that big. All the Kamala Harris's, all the Cory Bookers want to get rid of Joe Biden uh, and, and get on with the real primary. You're, you're totally right. I mean, the, what that's what's happening. Mark Stein, mm. so smart. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Tucker.